705, and today I'm BC. We'll get this out of the way. This is Spirit Cars. Live 1105 is brought to you by SpiritCars.com. Check it out. We build hot rod cars. A lot of good stuff on that site. And if you're seeing this, you may be on our Facebook page, but Stephanie, she's been uh, putting it on YouTube also, so you might be seeing it on YouTube. We're not doing YouTube live yet, are we? No. No. So we're just live on Facebook right now. And uh, today's a frazzle day for me, so we're, this is going to be sort of a philo philosophical thing. What, what did we title it? We titled it something like uh, Hot Rods, it's, When uh, to Start and When to Stop Building Your Hot Rod. Yeah. So, I don't want this to be like a whiner day, so don't take this as I'm a whiner, but this is like my day. And I've lived my life under stress, so stress is like something I thrive under, so it's not a big deal. But seriously, when to start and when to stop. I mean, look at the big picture. Count the cost. Is this something you feel like you can accomplish? I mean, do you have the resources, uh, both financially, the resources, time? Do you have the place to work on the car? Um, what Do you have the, the friends or the, the different places to have the work accomplished? You know, do you want a, a turnkey card? You know, when do you start the process? You know, are the kids gone? <laughs> Out of college, are you are you home alone? Do you finally like, who oh, I've wanted this forever? Or are you in a, a financial position as a young person that um, you just want to start this and, and maybe you have kids and it's a project you want to do with your kids? I mean, to evaluate the whole thing. But once we've done that, it's really a lot more to it than that. My, my day today, I bolted on some differential parts, I've done some motor parts, I've analyzed and tried to figure out um, parts that we didn't have for, um, we needed a 90 and a, a thing that didn't work, had to figure out what we needed, then we had to figure out where to, to find it. Um, I'm the guy that's supposed to be in charge of production, so I've had a, in every department, is the department working and doing its thing, and you know, what do you need and do you do? I've wired this morning, I've um, my goodness, I buffed. I'm in the middle of buffing now. I'm, you know, talking to Stephanie this morning, getting her world straightened out so she can be ready to do this. And so, anyway, the point of all that being, how long is it going to take to do the project? If I've got a say a two-hour project, and I only have an hour to do it, I'd be best not to start that two-hour project. Start it when I have enough time to finish what I'm doing. And when do I stop on it? Stop when I'm at a stopping point. Sometimes it's better. I was talking to Eddie this morning. He's doing a top. He's doing the top for this car. And this is not a top that we've done before. It's pretty cool. Um, serious rake for it. So it's got a rake. It's coming back. Coming back. He had to build the patterns for it. Uh, matter of fact, I moved all this stuff last night to show Rodney his car, his uh, top. I put it on the bench and I didn't clean up his area, so he was, I don't know if he was mad about that, that he's a pretty good guy. But like I told him today, I said, if I pulled him on this, this project and sent him somewhere else, it would take twice as long to do this because he wasn't at a stopping point. He was in the middle of cutting his, his materials. He'd already built the top that fit, sewed it together, made sure it fit and then uh, took it apart and, and cut the top apart to use it for a pattern. And uh, we'll probably keep the pattern, so next time somebody wants one with a severe angle like this, and we had to use a 20-inch tall windshield because you couldn't see out of it, and uh, it comes back, it'll come around. And we, we really need to uh, do a video on this, how to snap one down and pull it down and go down to the rods. And what we're going to do next is we're going to paint these rods uh, tan color, um, to match the top, this is just some straps that hold the, hold this together when it folds apart. It doesn't just come apart. So, actually, I was a little bit involved with this. Obviously, I'm I'm working on two, three, four turnkeys that we're anxious to get up. They're all on the verge of going out, but it's just not me working. I'm working with other people. We got a team going on. The point of today. Hopefully, you got something out of that. The point of today, when to start, when to stop. If you're going to do a quality job, don't look at the big picture. You can't look at the big picture. 
don't be stressed over, I've got to have this done. Take a bite-sized piece. If you have a two hours to work on your car at night, if you have an hour to work on your car at night, if you have four hours to work on your car at night, look what you can get accomplished in that amount of time. Set yourself a target. But don't walk away from something that's just half finished and you may forget. I put a, a, um, a chrome part on and I had the, the gasket sealer on it and everything else and had all the bolts in it and it was 11.05. I could not walk away from that until my bolts were tight. I mean, I couldn't leave that gasket sealer drying. I mean, that's just a kind of an example. It's, it's an obvious easy one. Uh, here's another. You don't need to come down, but here's a new, new fender we have. We put fenders on spindle mount fenders before, but uh, it was too narrow. I didn't like it. So I took this width, and we added this in, so now my fender is this wide, and it covers my wheel much better. And that was a project for this morning. You know, it took X amount of time. I had to cut that out, do, you know, so an hour it took to do. Budget your time. Seriously, budget your time. And uh, don't stress out over it. It, it is what it is sometimes. And um, the only way you're going to get quality is not look at, i got to get this done. Look at, is it done before you finish? So start when you can spend the time to do what you're going to accomplish. You're building a whole car, so don't, don't try to build this whole car at one time. Put the radiator on. Make sure your grill shell is fitted before you paint it. You know, once it's painted, put the, the grill inside of that. You know, it's different. There's four different projects, and just put then you know put you, put your uh, hoses on it. So it really, there's, and then you got your overflow tanks. You can make five different projects out of that. It all could be done at one time, or if you have a limited amount of time, 20 minutes or an hour, get X amount done with it. But get done with what we're doing. Let's go down to really what I'm working on at the moment. Oh, here's what I want to show. This is what I want to show. That's why we started here. Why don't you come up over that way? We've got a mirror firewall. Really cool looking. It's, you kind of really can't tell really what it looks like because it's got a plastic on it, but by the time you pull that plastic off, it is, it's, it's neat. It's, it's clean and shiny. You got to come through, you got to cut the hole, push your uh, steering column down. This one's got a transmission filler, so I've got the holes already cut through there. Um, you got to be very careful. We, we've done them in stainless. It takes a lot of polishing to get stainless to look right. But this is a plexiglass, a mirrored plexiglass that we use. You can't tell from the, the thing, it looks real scuffed up, but it's got a plastic on it. So once you get it installed, um, pull the plastic off afterwards. I cut it on a bandsaw. I make a cardboard template. We've got, we actually got a stainless template for what it is, so we can cut it down there. Um, be very careful, because like a mirror, of any mirror, this is a clear piece of, piece of plexiglass with the mirror material on the back. So if I run it through a bandsaw this direction, there's a chance I could scratch the back, and if I scratch the back, you'll see that all the way through the, the clear plastic and there'll be a gap in there and you'll ruin it. This is pretty expensive stuff and you'll ruin that. If you look on the edge here, a lot of us back in the old days, you remember the cars had a door edge guard? This door edge guard is good for a lot of different places. I mean, we're not going to use it on this one, but you could put a door edge guard around the end of your uh, grill shell. Looks pretty cool. If you want to put it on your bed cover, you can put it there. Anyway, where we use it here, you can kind of see around the whole um, chrome piece, I put a door edge guard and it really finishes it nicely. Uh, we actually offer these um, for a spear car, we sell it cut to cut to shape. We don't put the, the parts for the column or the, any of that, but you've got to be very careful. If you run a drill bit in here, if that hangs up at all, uh, it's going to crack your plexiglass and it'll just it'll crack and ruin it so you got to be be kind of careful in drilling holes with it so anyway this is for Rodney's car let's go over to Rodney's car some of the projects going on we 
we got the transmission chipped in and the whole for the green car and the whole housing is cracked. They chunk off the housing. That's kind of a bummer, it makes you sick. So we're fighting with the freight company right now. If you seen yesterday, if you didn't see yesterday, we didn't have great reception in the um, in the room. We're over at my son-in-law's, over at the jewel chest, and we were doing some uh, laser etching. Pretty cool. The program uploaded fine afterwards, though. So it's on yesterday's Facebook, and we'll probably put it on YouTube. It is uh, on YouTube. I, I was going to put that on as a one and two, so don't put anything else next to that yet okay. until we do tomorrow. We're going to do a full thing on this and then put part one and part two. Okay. You can kind of see here's... Larry, start putting it together. Can you see that on there? Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Can you see that on there? Um. I mean, that's how detailed he's getting. We tried, he tried on a, uh, on a screwdriver to put black night, but the way it was rounded, it was too hard to read, so we didn't do that. So this is coming. Tomorrow we're going to do this. this. This tomorrow should be all decked out with, I mean, look at the bolts down here. Check out this bolt. It's got a little black night on there. Can you see that? Yes. So we're that's we're getting this one detailed out. So right now, we got Rodney's car. Been painted already. It's got the ghost flames on it. Uh, wet sanding. I'm buffing it. So we're wet sanding it. You can get a great paint job, but I don't care how great your paint job is out of the booth. You can always make it better by wet sanding. I would highly recommend finish the 2,000 grit uh, before you buff, so it, you know, it almost looks like it's not shiny anymore, because it's not. It's been sanded, but it's sanded with 2,000. It takes all the orange peel out and all everything, so I want to buff this before I put my chrome cover on here. So we'll get the cover on mm. here. I'll get it fit. I'll get it taped on. I'll go around the edges to make sure I like the way all the edges are and trim it out. Um, one trick, you can go, you can see through this on the inside. If you get this taped up real nice and uh, real tight to that where you want it, if I go on the inside of the car and I take some black or whatever color, just rattle can paint, and I spray through that hole on the inside, I'm going to spray exactly where this hole is, and I'll have it marked like this. That's a way to do that, so if you happen to, you know, be doing that, this one's got a hole right here for the, uh, the throttle cable's already gone through. Kind of the same thing. One that's up there, I can either take a marker and stick it through there and dab it, or I can take that spray can. If I spray through that hole, it's going to give me a mark here. Um, it's a technique we use a lot. To, to go ahead and uh, go through and follow through with uh, getting our patterns when, it's, when you can't see the, the blind side. So this is going to have a chrome, chrome grill show on it, or chrome uh, firewall. I want a detail, and, and once I get this thing on, I don't want to have to, uh, I'm getting down to my details. I don't even want to pull my plastic off until just before uh, Rodney comes to get his car. Um, Time will wear things and dust will get them dirty. So it's, it's nice to have it as clean as you can and as safe as you can while you're working on the car because you do create dirt and dust and, and there'll be buffing compound everywhere. Um, so that pretty much, that's it. The theme for today, know when to start, know when to stop. Don't get stressed. This is a hobby. This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be an enjoyable thing. You know, when you go out in the garage at night, you want to have a good time. You know, you, you don't want to be um, going and fighting it with, with your, in your mind about a problem on the car. Um, it's not a problem. It's just a solution waiting to happen. It's hot rotting. Um, I was talking with Larry about it. Last night, we're sitting on the porch just looking at the goats and, and talking about hot rod cars. You know, some of the cars we've built in the past and then some of the, we all like different cars, what kind of cars he likes and what kind I like. And, you know, he asked me if I ever was going to build a car again. And there's, there's two kind of cars. He's building a, uh, a one-off show car that's 
it's a lot of thought that goes into it. I mean, it's almost as much thought process goes into your car as actual hands-on. Um, and I, I thought about it. I don't. I almost get as much enjoyment anymore as being the hands and, and maybe being part of the process with other folks building their cars. That versus me taking the time. I just can't take the time to build my own. I can't justify it. I don't think. So I, when we come in this morning, I said, "Here's what I'm going to build. I'm going to build me a motorized picnic table." Because I've got my old 27 over there, which, after all I just said, ever everything I just said. I'm motivated to get my 27. I've put a lot of thought into what it's going to look like. I, and so I want to get it done at some point pretty soon. It's been two years since I've even worked on it. So I want to do that. But I'm going to knock together a motorized picnic table with the grill in it and the whole thing so I can drive down to the pond with the grandkids. I've been landscaping my pond down there. So that's, uh, that's my higher motivation than a hot rod car. It's going to be a hot rod picnic table. So anyway. If you can think about it, you can build it. Just be patient. Just be motivated. I mean, it don't happen if you don't do something. But really think about, do I have the time right now to do what I need to do? And if you have the time, get her done. Do it. And don't quit until you come to a stopping point. And at some point, one bite at a time, we can all eat an elephant. <laughs> so sometimes it seems like we're building an elephant. You are building a car. And you're building a nice car. You're building cars nicer than you're building a nice car. So anyway, here we are. Pass it on. Coffee break contemplations. Coffee break. We haven't done it in a while. We haven't done it. Pressure's on. Are you going to pick one? you got to pick one that's appropriate. I'll pick one. And what's Grandpa? Troy? Troy. Troy. Hi, Troy. Okay, do this one. This Under one right here. Yeah, underneath the smiley face. Okay, we'll see. This better be good. I hope it better is. Better fit with the whole theme today. Probably won't. Praise and heartfelt appreciation many times exceeds the value of a material gift. Return the favor with appreciation. That's just a good one. Praise and heartfelt appreciation many times exceeds the value of a material gift. Return the favor with appreciation. Ego and vanity, sometimes these cars can be ego and vanity, and we like to get praise for our work. But it's, when you get hot rides guys together, it's, it shouldn't be about an ego thing. When I see a good quality job and somebody has a great idea, man, I like to say, man, you got a great idea. And I appreciate it. I appreciate good work. So it's not about the material things. It's just, uh, let's read it one more time and we'll finish because... This is a good one. Praise and heartfelt appreciation many times exceeds the value of the material gift. So it's just material stuff. So return the favor. So if someone's complimenting you, don't be like an old grump and just like, oh, look at me. You're just nothing. Return the favor with appreciation. So there we are for today. Today's what, Wednesday? Yes. Tomorrow we're going to do... Uh, we're going to do a whole thing on... The Black Knight's going to be together, and then that's Thursday, and then Friday we're going to do a whole thing on on the, the Blue Moon. So that's the schedule, and you're going to keep us on track on schedule, right, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Very good. So we'll see you tomorrow.